Hi, welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. We're getting ready to put together a water maker. Yeah, I ordered all the parts for it, the little fitty things. It was really nice. You know, you let out the big pieces, then find the little ones that go in. And the job for this week is putting in the portholes. And most people think, as I first did, that they mount on the outside of the boat. I think that comes from seeing so many Liberty ships with the, the rivets and the ring outside, but the portal's actually on the inside. A side job, I'm trying to get my silicone back in around this shaft for opening and closing the hatch. And this stuff makes a really soft gasket, which is good for keeping the water out. I know that because without them, the water has been pouring in every time it rains. And there's another side job. Bart's out mowing Paul's lot out there. Hey! <laughs> now this may very well be a case of, you know, when the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But uh, I need a seal in this groove here because see this has a raised part on the glass part of the portal. And uh, when it closes, I need it to seal and it needs to seal out water because you know, when we're under sail, the boat's rolled over to one side and there's big waves. You'll actually see the inside of a wave because you'll see the wave go past the window. So it's gotta seal up pretty good. You know, I'd like to keep most of the water out of the boat. And if you saw our older videos, you saw us casting these. This is the cover for the uh, inside of the portal in case the glass breaks. Uh, it's actually uh, called a dead light. I think it's to shut the light out on military vessels, but it's also a safety closure. And we cast all of ours, they're out of aluminum. This one is after uh, Mark Twain's quote. Uh, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did do. So cast off the bow lines. Sail away from safe harbor, explore, dream, discover. This may just be the perfect goop for here. Yeah, I think that's going to work just fine. Look, here's one that still has its gasket in it and it is dried out. Okay, and they brought it right up to the edge, so maybe that's what I want to do. Yeah, the stuff back behind is in really good shape actually. It's just the front part that's all cracked up like that. Oh, that's got a Durham of about 70, I'd say. Pencil eraser. Durham is a measurement of hardness, kind of like Rockwell. But uh, it's just shot out here on the outside where the UV got to it over the years. Slowly, I'm losing the decorations off my patio. This one has uh, packing gland in it. That's uh, what you normally would put around a drive shaft to keep it from leaking. There they are, all my new seals in. Some of them are lighter, and I think that's just because I messed up on the mixture ratio, but they'll harden up anyway. They're just gonna take longer. These are the ones that I didn't get the mix right, and they're drying, but really slowly. It's been about, oh, 18 hours or so, maybe less, but I have something I wanna try. Every time I mix two part solutions, I worry about this happening and like getting it wrong completely. And I always wondered if you put a little bit of hardener and brushed it onto the surface, if you couldn't accelerate it. You know, at least if I get the surface to go off quickly, I'll be able to put them in and not mess up the seal. And that the rest of it can have, you know, heck, it can have another year to dry. What do we always say? Two years before we put it in the water, right? We'll see what that does for it. These will give me plenty of work for today and tomorrow. Oh yeah. Oh, my mess. And there's another side job. That's my neighbor Henry. We made him some steel gates. Actually, he did all the welding. Check out these welds, all right? All laid in. Very nice. He didn't even bother tapering the pipe. He just filled the gap with them. And I just love that. And you know how long Henry's been uh, welding? This is uh, this is day two. This gate is the first thing he's ever welded together. Stick welding too.
almost out of duct tape. It's a tragedy. Two of these that are the same. Most of them came out of a bar in Boston. piece that seals into the silicone. It's got a nice edge there. I have to make sure that they actually fit. And then there are four dogs that can hold that part down. You only need to close a couple of them. And the hinge needs to be sloppy so that the window can actually fit into the rim. That way it seats nicely into that gasket. So if it's got a leak, that'll be the problem. And then if you break the glass or you're under enemy attack and need to block out the light, you close the dead light and put it on. So the fact that the dead light only has two dogs means that you can leave the glass secured in and add the dead light on by taking these two dogs off if need be. That one needs a little oil. There we go. And secure the dead light over it. You know, so if you had a crack or something in there, you don't have to take all four dogs off. Opening this thing up under sail, especially on a, uh, that'd be a port tack where the boat's leaning this direction into the water. This thing would take on so much water that it would be incredible. You'd need to get the boat oriented so that the water wasn't coming through here uh, and then try and get this hatch closed up as fast as possible because uh, you're going to sink the boat with that big a hole. It's amazing how much water comes in. No bilge pump less than some heavy duty industrial thing is going to keep the water out. Just don't count on the bilge pump doing it. So that's cool. So we'll only really have them open when we're sitting at anchor somewhere or we just need some extra breeze. Anytime we're underway, uh, unless we just know we're moving a mile or two and there's not going to be an issue, we'll have the glass intact. I like it. Today, it's open. Little Celtic symbol there, the three-legged man and the hands. When I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. Change is good. we welded nuts back behind there and then we put corks inside of them just to keep all the paint and crap out of them over the years while they waited for this. There's hardly any two of these portals that are the same so the bolts change. These are half inch bolts. The others are uh, 7 16 and uh, it's real important with stainless steel to make sure there's no burrs or any crap in there that's going to gall them up so I can try and avoid the repairs that were necessary across the way. And then we'll use Never Seize on here too uh, on the final insert just to make sure that if we do need to take them off later on we have a better chance of that. See I'm going to run a 
tap into that one, clean it up. And most of the problem here is created by welding the uh, stainless steel nut onto the back of the ring here. That distorts the nut considerably. tape it's just a butyl rubber it's real soft and flexible and it's gooey and it doesn't harden up so it makes a great seal never sees great for keeping it from gumming up and corroding together over time. Now we got to pull the frame into this opening. This was built for it, but with all the layers of paint on there, it's a tight fit now, so we use these bolts to tighten it down and suck it in. I gotta grind back a little bit. And that one up there too. Ah, that's better. Oh, much better. Yeah, that makes all the difference in the world. There we go. Two for two. to keep that pin in there. Look, these things are actually designed to pry the portal open when you push out on them. And what's nice is some of these are actually stamped. This one's U17. It lets me find the mate to it. U17. Okay, and they weigh about, oh, I guess 70 pounds. This is one of my favorite ones. Sue Davis helped us with this one. She passed away about a year ago. I have no fear of great depths, but great fear of shallow living. That summed up Sue really well. Oh, and brushing on the hardener did help some. It uh, makes the stout side where it's not sticky or tacky, doesn't pick up dirt. But boy, if you push down on it, watch, you can see it bulge up down in there. But it's still soft underneath. And I think that's just fine. It'll probably harden up as time goes on, but I'm happy. Well, I got to take this one out and put it in upside down. And I already sheared one bolt on here and had to drill it out. I sheared four bolts, putting a total of 10 of these in. I think that's pretty par for the course. Okay, yeah, it, it's it's not that one, it's this one. <laughs>
this one, unlike the others, has to open up. It, uh, boy, you can see why I like them opening down. It's the it's sheer weight of these things. So I'll put a latch up there to hold it open. Or maybe I'll just put a stick in it. Traditionally, these things open upward instead of down, but I don't like that. I actually much prefer them opening downward. You know, it's like too many people are just stuck in tradition, so I'll really piss some people off. They're probably already writing comments in there about that. They should open the other way. Like, well, you know what? I like them like this, so no serious latches needed. I mean, we might put something there to hold it down when we're rolling, but, you know, I'm not even sure that's going to do much. We'll wait and see. And then if you need to escape out one of them, which you actually can, this is 16 inches, so you can get the human body through there unless you let yourself go too much, like I almost have. It, uh, when they're open down, they're not going to be in your way. You know, it's easier to get in and out. And if you were uh, holding your hands in here, you know, waving or saying hello to somebody on the other side, and you bumped that latch off, this is about uh, 50 pounds of glass and metal that had come down on your back of your neck or your hands. So if you like hinging them up, then you do that on yours. I like mine down, so yeah. adjust some of these dogs some of them are too long some too short some of them are missing but I think that's work we will do on the water should be some interesting machining to cut some threads like that that probably be be done by hand that's anyway we'll take care of that later and I'll give you a tour of some of the portals you've missed that is Martin Luther King and the quote is darkness cannot drive out darkness only light can do that the rest of the quote is Hatred cannot drive out hatred, only love can do that. All oh, these protesters need to take note of that. Lao Tzu, one of my favorites, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I don't know the author of this one, but it's, when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. Never, never, never give up. Damn straight, love that man. People succeed when they have fun. Boy, that is so true. Now, a lot of times what that means is you got to learn to have fun doing things you didn't think you'd want to do. And then this back one here is some people care too much. I think it's called love. And if that's not enough boat building for you, then go check out our friends over at Brew Peg. They're reconditioning an expedition trawler. That'd be fun to hook up with them sometime in the future, huh? And, uh... Show us what you love doing. Show us your projects. Send us your photos. We'll put them up. What you make today?